Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello. How are you doing? So, this is a quite a long episode. We've been we've yes. been going going on this a while, and uh, we're still in. You know, we started talking about from from the tree to the tone, and we had our discussion. And then when we went to the tone woods, then we went upstairs in the sound booth, and we basically just took a pile of wood up there, and we had um, lots of different tops, different grade Sitkas, Adirondack, cedar, and mahogany for tops. And then we listened to backs and sides, and we had uh, some pele, kaya, which are both African mahoganies, walnut. Rosewood, and you recorded them. I recorded them all. No, and I was tapping them. Very flat with, um, actually with one of these microphones, one of these uh, nice um, flat DPA, mm. kind of like a measuring microphone with extremely linear response. So I think it was um, quite telling though. So I was tapping and obviously I had the headphones. I could, I could hear what I was doing. We haven't listened to this yet. So um, yeah, I mean, just from with headphones on and coming through, through the mic was just like it's really really different well i mean we'll, we'll listen back i can almost think i could tell them in a blindfold because it was certainly the backs because they were so different more different and some better than i would have imagined well, when i say better you know is, is that the right word better the right word different is better more pleasing sometimes to the ear certain but certainly the resonance of resonances. And some of them were yeah. seem seem and the volume, of yeah, the ho yeah, the volume, the, t the the pitch, yeah. It's yeah. always subjective, though, isn't it? So I guess it's the maybe it's the polite thing to say will be preferred <laughs> to your required tonal characteristics. There is, well, I think, when you when you tap wood, there's two things that happens for me anyway. There is an air sensation going on, and you can feel that, and that affects the sound. And then there's a chime in the wood. I don't know if chime's the right word, but there's that. It's, they say it's the note, and it's the mixture of that sort of bloom you know like that sort mm. of mm. and and that sound that comes through so if, so it, it can it can sound quite chimey but it doesn't have that that sort of air mm. around it mm. and i think and it can be the other way as well but when you get both of those like on one particular when when we all went use some some french words mm -hmm. and um <laughs> That had everything, but I, I, you know, and also I think what, what we've got to remember, and it's the same when you're playing guitar, when we spend so long like micing up guitars, microphones are really different to your ear, right? Mm. <laughs> Couldn't be more different, could they? Which is why we have stuff like EQ, and compression, compression and everything. It's just, you know, you, pl you play a guitar, you sit and listen, say I sit and listen to Tim playing that guitar, I'm playing this one, I go in and listen, even though they're flat, it's just different. You know, your ears yeah. are completely, I'm not going to say completely different than mics, but the, the nuances are, and it's almost like, did we capture that anyway? And well, I guess, mm. I guess we'll see. Should we dig in? Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to put our headphones on. Great. And, and see what happens. Great stuff. Great. Oh, okay, let's do Great. that then. So first one. Yeah. Sapele. Should we listen? Yeah. So we've got a nice piece of Sapele from Africa. So about... When tap testing, there's always a sweet spot. Sometimes you've got to move your finger around to find this one. Interesting. So to me, there's like that chime thing is there, but there's not a lot of air around it. It's quite direct. When I found the place, because sometimes it takes quite, you don't get the spot immediately. But let's keep going, so we've got nothing to reference it. But to me, that's quite quite a dry sound. Right. So it's, it's got that sort of note, but there's not a lot of. There's a kind of hollowness yeah. to that note, isn't there? Yeah. Like an actual dong, dong. Yeah. Yeah. But woody. But it's and quite strong. You know, the fundamentals are certainly there. It feels to me like it feels quite hard. Is mm -hmm. it? Is it? A, is it a hard semi? Right. Yeah. It's not like a rosewood or anything. But so going into the next one. What's the next one? African mahogany was the next so one. So okay. let's, let's have a listen to that. Okay. This is kaya. So this is what we use as our African uh, mahogany.
just find this little place somewhere. Look different. Mmm, that's good. <laughs> That, so sounds, that sounds like a drum. Yeah, it sounds like it would be more musical as a piece of wood in a guitar. And do you hear the air? Yes. Compared to the, to the sapelli? Mm-hmm. Now, just to say that although the woods are very similar size and thickness, especially thickness, there are slight variations in size. I'm not exactly sure how much that might be impacting things. But, but for these two, they're very similar, but completely different sound. So what's sapelli used for in... Many people use it as their, as their African mahogany. Right. And I'll be honest with you, until we did this, I didn't know tonally how different it was. When we had to choose which woods to use, I chose Kaya because of per personal preference. I just think it looks better. Because Sapelli can be very stripy. And the stripiness is okay. And Kaya can have some stripe as well, but I just think Kaya's got a bit more richness when you look at it. I had no idea until we did this. It was sonically, it was so much better than Sapelli. So that's in the one, this experiment, anyway. So yeah. that's the one Alvarez used. We the use, second one. We use, yeah. Yeah, that's the nicer sound in one to me. Where the I first one, do you, do you know what I mean by that dryness? It's mm -hmm. not. It's not that. Yeah, of, I do actually. It's like you, you described it as a kind of a, a bloom, right? Yeah, you know, it's like I don't know, plume, bloom. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like. It's so almost if you drop a penny into some flower and you get the, what's that called? It's called dropping some pennies into a flower. Into some flower and the flower just goes, you know, that's what, that's kind of what I'm hearing. So it's just like that, yeah. and, then it, and then it subsides. I thought bloom was a pretty good way. It does feel like it just sort of, sort of goes. It blooms, you know, like, a, sort of, it, there's like an a impact. bloomer. There's like an a, impact, a, a bloom. bloomer. <laughs> but it's like a dissolution of energy, isn't it? It should be known as the... Uh, the bloomer from the bloomer. It is. It, that's yeah. what, exactly what it is. It's energy. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. yeah. So it's like a. Yeah. And then it come, comes back. And within that, there's, the, there's that note, that chime. Mm. Also, I thought that sounded like a drum. And actually, in my mind, it sounded African. You know, it had that sort of mm. musical thing going on. It did. It sounded. I mean, this is my first time listening to any of this. And as I said earlier, I don't. I'm here to be educated. Mm -hmm. But I can hear a difference there. Yeah, and I understand which good. one I would want to use if I was making a guitar. Yeah, very cool. Okay, next we have walnut. Gorgeous walnut. Black walnut. I think that's it's beautiful sounding. I mean, it sounds like musical wood, and it's mm. and, and the resonance, energy, you know, that sound, that bloom, plume, mm -hmm. <laughs> or whatever we call it, is huge. And the and and the note, the chime is is big as well. It's a lot harder, isn't it? Yeah. Than mahogany, and you yeah. can hear it. Uh, slightly. Is it? Is it only slightly? Feel it for me. It's stiffer. You yeah. Know? But it's very different. And I remember doing this. We went up the stairs. I couldn't believe that because, you know, I'll be honest, we, we, we struggle with respect because, I mean, we use walnut for tops as well. So it's obviously, you know, a hard wood. And when I did this, I thought, gosh, this is so resonant. And it almost makes you think, I need, I need to approach walnut completely differently. Get more of that out. Would you find at the moment it's kind of not choked in guitar, in the way you make guitars with it, but... I think that... You know, finding the balance between the thickness of the top and the weight of the braces. And you're always chasing that, I think. For Alvarez, not Yairi, but for Alvarez, when obviously we're, we're making a lot of these. Having many different variations of components and raw materials in one factory obviously increases the risk mm -hmm. of, of things going wrong. If you have hundreds and hundreds of variations, when you have to produce something at a certain cost, we... We're, we're very good at that. We prefer to lean towards, let's make a great guitar, but obviously they have to be affordable and competitive. So if you have many different bracing patterns and, and variations of components and raw materials, it obviously increases time and it increases cost. So 
as a as a developer in a factory which is making lots of guitars, you have to find the balance between getting a great playing, great looking instrument that is, you know, correctly affordable for what it what it is. But listening to that, what that makes me think is we need to revisit and can we revisit that construction to get the best or get more out of some of some of the woods after this test. It was really quite profound for me. It's, I mean, it's huge, isn't it? That yes. Piece, it then, is. Then we go on to the next one. Mm -hmm. So strong. Boom. Boom. Like the chime is so strong. You've got the air. Yeah. But but now you've got to me less there's loads of air. The note is so strong it coming is. It's through that. Prominent, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. You know what we're talking about at the beginning? That's Rosewood, by the way. Uh, East Indian Rosewood. And what we are talking about at the beginning was why, why do guitars sound, <laughs> sound the way they do? For, for us, there's four main things. What would you choose? The bracing, the shape of the body, the size of the body, and the player. That just, just underlines that to me. Yeah. You know, what we say about Rosewood being so, you know, on an EQ level, people say it's scooped and you get lots of bass and lots of treble. And almost when you're pinging that, you know, the chime is there, the mm -hmm. hardness that you need to, to create that. But then it's also all got all of that resonance around it, which is like... When I, hear, when I hear the walnut, I just hear a stiffness. It sounds wonderful, but it's, I hear a stiffness and it's, it's a volume. When I hear the mahogany and the rosewood, I hear a musicality. More than the walnut? I think so, yeah. I think what I heard in the walnut was a lot of air. Yeah. Obviously the chime is there, but more, you know, if you're going to balance those two parts of what, mm. you, of what you're hearing, there's more air in the wall, where this is like super strong, mm. fundam that note, you know, that fundamental is like right there, and then it's surrounded by that energy. That's interesting to hear, actually, because Rosewood is my favourite, the mm -hmm. backs and sides, and when I was, when we were thinking about doing this episode, I, I researched, like, who are my favourite players, and it just so happened that they all play, like, Rosewood back and sides guitar, like Tony Rice or, or whatever. And I thought, is that the reason why I like it the most when I play those guitars? And actually, listening to those tap tests, that's by far my favourite sound as well that I've heard <laughs> out of those four. So if you take all of the, anything scientific or whatever away, just yeah. purely as a, as a, that's, as a sound, that's Yeah, that's, yeah. that's my favourite sound out of the four that yeah, I've just good. heard, or five, mm. four or five. It sounds more musical. It just sounds more musical than the other ones. I feel the same way. Yeah. Ro Rosewood and Mahogany. Yeah, without a doubt. Mahogany more for me. I, the second one. Surpri yeah, I'm, I'm always surprised how much I love Mahogany. I think the difference between Sapelli and Kai was, that was the biggest realisation for me here. And then also the, the resonance of, of Walnut. So we're going to move on to Tops. In my memory, we did three Sitka. Yes. So we use various grades. As you, as you go up the line, so we, we have um, something for our, our 30 series, which is the entry level. Then we have what we call A+, plus, which is sort of A, but unselected, the better ones. Then we use 2 and 3A. So we're going we're gonna to show that, those grades. And then we have some Adirondack and Mahogany and Cedar. Okay, this is the low-grade Sitka, yeah? Okay. Quite nice, actually, until I hear the next one. <sighs> Loud. Really resonant. That's amazing. Even at the top. What's really important, we've talked about wood being, you know, cut on the quarter. So some of our lower grade tops, they are not as stiff as the next grade up. So when you, you know, we talk about when you grade tops is you, obviously cosmetics. Yeah. Mm. But really, you want it on the court, a lot of silking going through, ah. and you want that stiffness. So the difference between those two, even though they're Sitka and they're the same uh, thickness and size, is one of them is just a, the high grade is a lot stiffer, and that stiffness creates that massive difference. You can see it in the waveform. The waveforms are completely different. And even going from the A grade, now we're going to go to, a, a, I think it's a 3A. Yeah. Should listen to that now? Yeah. Okay. Double A Sitka. Okay. So it's a 2A. Mm, maybe even a bit more. So here we've got. 
Das ist schon ein Freund. It is up here a little harder, but I'm sure it wasn't. But it's louder. Mm. That's amazing. There's that ring and that chime. So, I mean, it's like it's it's night and twice day. as loud, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, they're massively different. You've got this tiny sort of re response in in the low grade Sitka, and then a middle amount, and then and then the, the two A. I think it was probably better than a piece of two A, but it's yeah, it's 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 night and day. That's totally surprising. I mean, obviously, you you expect some improvement, but you wouldn't probably expect like a hundred percent response so, so measuring like this way. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Great, Amazing. let's move on. So this is Adirondack. Just find it so. Let's see. There you go. So it sounds strong, but it hasn't got as much very different. Nice. Can we just go back straight and listen to the, the, the 2A again? Yeah, of course. Let's try and find it. And then jump to under Adirondack. Strong though, isn't it? It's it has its own thing. It's like you can tell why they work when they're really driven, like on yeah big bluegrass dreads. Yeah, you can hear why that works. So you're right, Tim. Like bluegrass guys, but I mean, I mean plenty of people using Sitka as well. But certainly that that stiffness you can kind of hear. Yeah. And there's more to me. There was more air in, in that. Yes. In that nice piece of Sitka where this is super strong. Yeah. More focused, maybe. Yeah, more focused and I can hear why you kind of add a run like if I'm playing fingerstyle on it or when when a like a DYM sixty HDs come through and I've been playing fingerstyle, it may not have sang as much as I necessarily wanted to compared to lower grade yeah. um tops. And I hear it now and I hear why I like the things that I like and I isn't that interesting? That I didn't is, expect that is to. interesting. Your favourite sound as a piece of wood is also the favorite sound of a guitar. Yeah, <laughs> and I was not expecting that at all. I was, I don't know if I was expecting like, I, just, I wasn't expecting to hear that at all when we came into this. So, okay. it's cool. What we got next, mate? Cedar. Your fave? I love a bit of cedar. Let's hear Here this. Here we go, what's this gonna sound like? <laughs> wow. <laughs> so different. Wow, look at that. Wow. Wow. So, masses. Mm. Of, am I using the word bloom? <laughs> <laughs> but there's masses of air and res resonance energy, yeah. as Tim said, which is great. Hasn't got that Hasn't strong got that. chime. Yeah, or like a ping yeah. isn't there. It's like a, ooh, ooh. it's a rich baritone or something, it's, isn't it? It's, yeah. a, it's a grumble almost, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. Much softer. You know, we've come off the back of Ad Adirondack, straight into Cedar. Mm. Night and day, I did not think it would be that. Obviously, different. But mm. man, that is like other ends of the scale. Yeah. You've got like this chung and a, and a rumble. Can we have a listen to that again? Yeah, certainly. Oh, and then here. So different. Look how dense. Look at that. Like a drum. Yeah. It is like a drum. It almost sounds too much for me, yeah. like my ears, imagining putting that on a top of a guitar. But it works. I know it does. And you love it. And it sounds, when you get one out of the box and it's brand new, they are the ones that sound the most played in. That's the thing about it. You said this, and you've both said this mm. before. This, it just, it sounds more settled. It makes me want to go back to school, really, because you know, the wonderful luthiers of the world, when they're tapping and building and bracing and tapping and taking wood off yeah. and tapping, and that whole journey of handmade 
guitars with people who are listening to this stuff every step of the way. Yeah. It's massive. You know, mm. It's hugely impactful. Great. What have we got next? Wonderful. <laughs> Super focused. So that's yeah. A bit more of it. So compared to the Sitka, to the density of the file, it's like, so the cedar, not a lot of bloom there. Interesting, and especially being able to see the files as well. You've got that density around, you know, the, the, the initial tap. Yeah. And obviously we're getting quite a spread there, but it's very light, you know, and it's, and it's disappearing quick. So there's, so in that there's, there's lots of chime. Yeah. And very little air, which is, affects the guitar sound. Absolutely. Massively. Yeah. It sounds like it has this, people love mahogany. I'm not massive on it. I quite like it. But it sounds, and again, I wasn't expecting this, like it does when it's a guitar. It's really like straight down the middle with not all the thrills and overtones and mm. beauty that I like. I wasn't expecting any of this. I'm impressed. You're impressed? I'm impressed, yeah. <laughs> it's really holding up a microscope, isn't it? I think what's good about it is we can hear from tapping bits of wood while get, partly why the guitar sounds the way it does. And I think when we get into, I mean, you could even go into why the wood sounds the way it does, why the tree grows, you know, mm -hmm. all that sort of stuff mm -hmm. from climate to mm -hmm. conditions to whatever. And then, then when we get into bracing, now, now we've learned, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. now we've learned the, the, the sort of rudiments, and then what do you do with that? Yeah, <laughs> that'd be cool actually. Great. So great experiment. Great experiment. We hope that all came across nice and clear for everybody and um, we'll continue our a little journey. A little journey from the, the tree to tone. Tree to tone. Mm -hmm. But uh, with, so, with some considerations around bracing. See everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. -bye.